Audio Jungle. All right. So, hello everyone. Myself Narendra Chingoria. So, guys, today <coughs> we have to see the solution for Get Get Aerospace 2024 for aerodynamics. So, <coughs> now we have first question here. So, it is desired to estimate the aerodynamic drag on a car traveling at a speed of 30 meter per second. A one third scale model of car is tested in wind tunnel. Following the principles of dynamic similarity, the drag on the scaled model is measured to be dm. Okay, the ratio d by dm is all right. So this is the question. First question here. This is this question is what basically from the model and analysis. Okay, model and prototypes. So it is model analysis question. So see. Aerodynamic drag on a car traveling at a speed of 30 meter per second. One third skill model of the car is tested in wind tunnel. All right. So DM they said uh, a pro model. Okay. So here model and prototype. So aerodynamic drag D is what denotes to the prototype, and DM is what denote, denote to the model. All right. Obviously, the traveling at a speed. I better I will say dp. So this is dp is nothing but d. All right. And uh, that prototype of the car is what traveling at a speed of 30 meter per second. So here I can say this velocity is vp. That is the prototype velocity, which is nothing but 30 meter per second. Okay. All right. Now, <coughs> so. VP is given, but VM we do not have. One third scale model of car is tested in a wind tunnel following the principles of dynamic similarity. Okay. So, but I will write the relation for the dynamic similarity. The drag on the scaled model is measured to be. So, basically, here D by DM means DP by DM. This ratio they are asking. All right. This is the question. Now, so <clears throat> for the drag okay for the drag actually first here they have given this uh, what it is called the uh, scale model of the car is one third so scale model model which is nothing but lm by model by prototype which is it is one third okay for the car obviously prototype will be larger than model so it is one third or you can write in terms of length or in terms of diameter also if you want you can write dm by uh, small d because capital d you already have taken drag so it is dm by dp that is one third okay so this is scaling is what see sometimes you may take length or sometimes you may take diameter this is called geometrical similarity this is called geometrical similarity okay so lm by lp basically they have given now if you go for the dynamic similarity so in dynamic similarity so two things you have because it is that vehicle is what in air okay so and it is tested uh, that model is what tested in wind tunnel also so in wind tunnel obviously it will be air so two things you have to discuss number one that is reynolds number so dynamic similarity means that reynolds number re for the model and re for the prototype must be same this is the one second thing like drag okay drag for the model and drag for the uh, prototype it must be same now based on this we can uh, write the relation so what is the reynolds number it is rho v l by mu if you take diameter then it should be rho v d by mu this is for the model 
is equal to rho v l i am taking length of the car so hence it is l if you take diameter of the car then they have, because they have not given they said only uh, scale model is so scale model may be length or diameter anything so if you take length ratio then it is l in formula in 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 reynolds number otherwise you can uh, write the drag so here i am taking length okay this is for the prototype so what is the ratio you will get check both places for the model and prototype it is air only so density will be cancelled out and obviously mu is the dynamic viscosity so it is also cancelled out because it will be same okay it will be same for the air for both cases model and prototype so what relation you will get you will get velocity vm lm is equal to vp lp so what is the vm by vp it's a uh, uh, lp by lp by lm this is the ratio of the velocity we got from the first uh, dynamic similarity that is the reynolds number now coming to the drag so drag is nothing but what force okay so what is the relation it is rho v square l square so this rho square rho v square l square for the model and for the prototype it must be same this is the force okay rho v square l square is the force so l square this is nothing but prototype all right now so <coughs> If you write again density for model and prototype both will be same because it's air. So what is the relation we will have here? That relation, if you check, it's nothing but in terms of the uh, this formula, basically drag for uh, drag uh, uh, force. So I I can say this ratio is this is nothing but drag force. Okay, so it is like dm is equal to model is equal to prototype. Uh, not equal to you just wait so this is the formula now i can write the ratio better so what is the model divided by the prototype because they are asking uh, prototype by model yes prototype by the model means you can say it's dp by dm or d by dm so it's a prototype by model so what is the prototype value it's a v p okay by vm square okay vp by vm square and what about the l lp by lm square because it's a square okay now <clears throat> if you check density will be cancelled out so this is the value now so here i have this much space only so what is the vp by vm vp by vm if you check this value so what is the vp by vm it is lm by lp it is square so it is square into this is lp by lm square see it is cancel out right so what is the ratio you got you got ratio dp by dm which is nothing but one that is d by dm so this is the solution actually okay because this value will be cancel out it's one only huh? so hope this one is clear to you so what is the answer here it is 1.0 all right now coming to this <coughs> next question showing at uh, mach number m is equal to 2 from left to right accelerates to mach 3 across an expansion corner as shown in figure what is the value of delta where the delta is the angle between the forward and rearward mach lines in degree so this is the delta this is the forward mac line and this in the rear world so for the forward mac line you know that uh, angle for the forward where will be the uh, forward mac angle and where will, will be the rearward mac angle that you already know right so i can say 
first i will draw the diagram so it will be more clear to you right i can take this is the surface flow is what coming and once flow will come then obviously flow will expand here so i can say forward and backward okay it's supposed to be like this now <clears throat> we have a forward and a rear world so this is the rear world rear right line and this is the forward line okay so for the rear world this angle is nothing but called mu2 and for the forward this angle is nothing but here it is mu1 okay all right now this angle is called theta how much it is deflected it is theta and this angle they have given in the question itself it is delta see this is the delta between rearward and forward see here the mac which is nothing but 1 it is given 2 here it is mac after the expansion it is mac 2 what is that 3 all right okay now we know very well that how to find the uh, mac angle uh, that formula we know mac angle okay that is mu is equal to sin inverse 1 by m so for the forward mac angle it is mu 1 hence it is nothing but sin inverse 1 by m1 so what is the mu 1 value check sin inverse of 1 by m1 is nothing but 2 means it is i think if you calculate this value it is 30 degree right it is 30 degree similarly this is for the forward mac angle now rearward mac angle what is that it's mu2 sin inverse 1 by m2 what is mu2 1 by 3 if you solve this sin inverse of mu2 is 3 so 1 by 3 it is nothing but 19. 47 degree mu1 and mu2 we got now check the diagram mu1 and mu2 okay for the <coughs> mu1 and mu2 if you calculate the theta value that is the deflection angle here theta how to get theta so this theta will be what theta is nothing but it's a <coughs> mu2 minus mu1 where it is given it is given in in the problem see that two value basically this mu3 and mu2 this value they have given which is called prandtl meier function so this prandtl meier function we have to uh, calculate okay what value will get here check it is nothing but see mu m2 minus mu m1 so what is the value here check theta is equal to mu m2 they have given to us how much it's a 49.76 it's a 49 point minus it's a 26.38 how much it is theta or you just say theta 2 better okay because in practice in regular lectures we had uh, represented it mu theta or theta 2 so this is nothing but theta 2 better you take 
should theta two. So what is this value? Forty nine minus seven six. Forty nine point. This value is nothing but twenty three point. 38 degree this is the value of theta 2 now check the diagram i have to take one angle here which is nothing but full length okay focus here this theta 2 we have this is this comes from the prandelt mayer function this is what it is clearly mentioned here see prandelt mayer function this result and this is the relation prandelt mayer function pm function so this theta 2 you got now i am considering this angle this angle i am just saying this is alpha 2 so <clears throat> if you say what is the alpha 2 so alpha 2 you can say it is mu 1 plus theta 2 that's it is mu 1 plus theta 2 yes or no it's a simple only see i will uh, draw it again so it will be more clear to you check Here it is nothing but mu two. This is nothing but mu one. This is the forward and rearward. So this angle is delta. I am taking one more angle, which is called okay. This angle is nothing but theta two. This whole angle I am considering from forward to this. It is alpha 2 so what is the alpha 2 check alpha 2 is nothing but it is mu 1 plus theta 2 right now theta 2 you have calculated mu 1 you have calculated check what is the alpha 2 it's mu 1 what is the mu 1 you have calculated here it's a 30 degree it's a 30 degree plus what is the theta 2 from the prandelt mayer function you have calculated 23.38 23.38 what is alpha 2 it's a 53 point 53.38 degree right now i'm interested in delta because in exam they have asked what is the angle between forward and rearward mac line so what is the delta check delta is nothing but check whole angle so delta you can say it's alpha 2 minus mu 2 so what is the alpha 2 it's a 53.38 minus what is the mu 2 mu 2 here you have written it's a 19.47 what is this value if you calculate this approximate 33.91 degree you will get check this delta they had asked what is the value 33.91 option is there 33.91 option d is correct okay it's very simple only i took time because i had written every steps and explained here if you solve an exam within two minutes you can finish it no it's very simple only i i must say okay now all right this is the next question consider a flat plate with a sharp leading edge this is the flat plate okay leading is placed in uniform flow here we have a uniform flow this is what uniform flow okay speed u what is the speed u the free stream flow is aligned with the plate all right it is aligned with the plate assume that the flow is steady incompressible and laminar you just remember this is laminar once if it is steady incompressible and in rotational it means there is no boundary layer formation but once it is said laminar then it means boundary layer will be formed okay because laminar flow is called viscous flow laminar flow is called viscous flow and once it is viscous flow then boundary layer will be formed the thickness of boundary layer they had asked so how that boundary layer will appear it will be like this this is called transition zone this is the turbulent this zone is called laminar zone 
laminar this is called transition means laminar is what converting into turbulent and this region is called turbulent okay so now for the laminar boundary thickness of boundary layer at the fixed stream wise location l from the leading edge okay uh as the plate is delta the thickness of boundary layer they have given delta at what distance at distance l from the leading edge so which one of the following correctly describe the variation of delta and u it's very simple layer see so what we have now check they are saying this is the plate here okay now they are talking only laminar boundary layer so i will show only laminar so this is what laminar boundary layer and for, from the laminar boundary layer from the leading edge to any distance l they said boundary layer thickness is how much it is delta they have mentioned it is okay the boundary layer thickness they have mentioned so how to write this you can show like this this is the formation of the so here if you check from l length so here this value is nothing but delta boundary layer thickness all right you might have heard in fluid mechanics even in aerodynamics in compressible uh, compressible in compressible aerodynamics so you had seen that boundary layer theory okay so called blasius solution blasius solution if velocity distribution they have given it is cubic or quadratic then accordingly we'll do otherwise if the velocity distribution they have not given then we should know what is the blasius solution what is the blasius solution simple <coughs> formula we have it's delta by x is equal to phi upon root of r e x but if it is for length l then it is delta by l is equal to phi divided by root of r e l what is delta delta is the boundary layer thickness hmm? delta is the boundary layer thickness so as per blasius solution this is the formula you need to remember this okay because if you are knowing this then only you can answer all right now so here you can write delta is equal to phi l divided by root of r e what is the r e reynolds number rho what is the velocity they have given it is u so rho u l divided by mu this is the formula right reynolds number formula so overall what you got delta inversely proportional to root of u so what is the delta delta is directly proportional to u to power minus 1 by 2 this is the result if you know the formula only you can answer for this question check delta u to power minus 1 by 2 this is the correct answer all right hope you understood this all right, right. now, now we'll, we'll go, go for, for next, next question. question here <laughs> structure for the flow at three different uh, mach number over a given which are shown in figure below given which that means uh, here see three wedges we have uh, figure below assuming that only the weak shock solution okay remember this weak shock solution are possible for the attached oblique shock which one of the following options is true okay okay so this is the wedge here and options are here so we have to find that mach number relation which one is higher which one is lower so now this is what wedge check this is what wedge this is the wedge this is what oblique shock wave here also oblique shock wave and this is called bow shock wave okay bow shock wave so <coughs> When, when the bow shock, shock will be formed, formed when, when see, see i just 
want to tell you one thing suppose these are the wedges so like here in this way you can understand the whole angle concept this is the wedge okay from mean this angle is what theta called wedge angle what is theta theta is called wedge angle okay and because here if you check the flow is what supersonic m greater than 1 m greater than 1 m greater than 1 so in all three cases flow is what supersonic so shock will be formed so obviously because it's a wedge it, it is having angle theta if it is exactly 90 then normal shock will be formed but theta is what here by the diagram only you can check theta is not 90 it is less than 90 hence oblique shock will be formed so this is the oblique shock like this so this oblique shock this angle called beta what is the beta beta is called uh, shock angle okay these two things are very important now you can understand here <coughs> beta we have just say this is m1 case so beta 1 will be here this is the m2 case so beta 2 will be here and this is the m3 case so beta 3 will be here so you can imagine if beta is what increasing then shock will be stronger stronger and stronger if, if beta angle is what less then it means shock is what weak 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 even though here they are talking about weak shock solution so and why this shock is what detached this is also called bow shock okay and this bow shock is what detached shock okay d attached shock or detached shock okay right it means this beta is what is greater than beta max one particular value is there beta max if you are having beta beyond that beta max then shock will be detached so that is the another analysis but here you need to understand here beta is what huge value that's the reason the shock is what detached now it is not attached but here if you check okay the shock angle this is this shock angle here it is you say say this is what beta 1 and you say here this is called beta 2 it is very clear after seeing the diagram you can say beta 1 is greater than beta 2 and moreover beta 3 is greater than beta 1 beta is get, beta 3 is what it is beyond the b max hence beta max hence the shock is what detached that means beta 3 is the highest value in this three graph and by showing here uh, by the graph 1 here beta 1 is greater than beta 2 even here you can see you can understand the graph so beta 3 is greater than beta 1 is greater than beta 2 right all right now this is the one thing second thing what i wanted to tell you if in this way if you go then it will be very easy to understand the things now one relation we have called theta beta m relation like this is what wedge okay this is the wedge here now you can understand by the formula also you can understand but theoretically also you can understand see this is the beta angle whatever the flow mach number it is m m is the mach number of the free stream flow okay which is nothing but supersonic greater than one if this mach number is what increasing it means that very strong flow is what coming once the strong flow is what coming and hitting here then this shock will try to compress it will shift towards the wedge what is the mean of it if m is increasing beta is what decreasing simple and by the formula also you can understand so what is the mean if beta is higher if beta is higher m is lower reverse also you can say so based on this you can mark uh, which one is correct answer right now just see in the diagram you can see here so beta is what larger value in which case three case it means m3 is the lower value where m3 is lower 
टू ऑप्शन वी है ऑप्शन ए एंड ऑप्शन डी एम थ्री इज लोअर लिस्ट वैल्यू एंड दैट इज ट्रू देन दिस टू आर रॉन्ग ओके रिमूव इट नाउ कमिंग टू दिस एम वन एंड एम टू चेक वट इज द नेक्स्ट अनदर एंगल यू कैन से इन बीटा वन एंड बीटा टू यू चेक so here you will get because once wedge angle wedge is what decided the same wedge because over given wedge are shown so same wedges are there so theta is what constant now theta they are not going to change because if theta is changed then again there will be the problem so in the problem itself they have mentioned theta is what constant now here beta is what more okay beta 1 is what more than beta 2 right so what is the mean of it it means m2 is greater than m1 m2 is greater, greater than m1 why because beta 1 is greater than beta 2 just reverse here i told you the relation just reciprocal so m2 is greater than m1 in which case m2 is greater than m1 m2 is here m2 is less than m1 here m2 is greater than m1 means this is also wrong what is the correct answer option b i hope this one is clear to all right okay <coughs> this is the one problem they had asked what, what is it, it in this problem check solution they said a constant, constant force vector it is 4i j minus 3k newton displaced from point a this is point a point a and here point a vector is given i 2j plus 3k meter displaced from point a to point b here this is point a and this is the point b and that location of this position vector is given how much pi i plus 4j plus k This, this is called position, position vector r so, so what is the r vector here r is nothing but you take any reference value here so if you check this r vector so it is nothing but ob vector minus oa vector or simply also you can say b vector b minus vector a what is that it's a 5i 4j k minus i plus 2j plus 3k. What is the position vector you are having here? It's 4i 4j minus 2j. It's 2j and k minus 3k. It's minus 2k meter, right? Now they are seeing work done by this force vector. What is the work? Work is nothing but its force into that position vector dr, or you can say force into r. If you check what is the work here, what is the value? It's a 4i uh, plus j minus 3k. 4i plus j dot product in bracket. What it is? 4i plus 2j minus 2k. 4i plus 2j minus 2k. How much it is? 16 i dot i 1 i dot j 0. Similarly, then I write others also. So 2 j into j it is 2. It's minus minus plus 6. How much it is? If you check this value, this should be.
All right. So Jules is there. So twenty four. This is the answer. Next question. <coughs> See. For this question, uh, this is a question from thin air fall theory. The lip coefficient of Naka zero zero one two. This is what symmetric air foil. Air foil. Okay, and obviously it is thin air foil is mentioned. Placed at five degree. Angle of attack. Alpha they have given angle of attack. Five degree in uniform flow is the lip coefficient. So C L they are asking. Okay. How to solve this? Check for the thin air foil theory. Thin air foil theory we have seen it is C L. Is equal to two pi sin alpha. Remember this thin air foil theory that assumption was small angle. It is valid for small angle. Yeah. So if angle is very small, so two pi sin alpha you can write for very small angle. You can write its alpha. Right. So this value is nothing but two pi. Alpha. All right. right. Now, CL value they are asking. So, what is the CL? It's two pi alpha. Value they have given two pi into alpha. Alpha is what in degree. Alpha is what in degree. Right. Five degree. We need to convert into radian. So, what we'll do? If you degree you convert into radian, it is pi divided by 180. It is converted into radian. Right? We we'll solve this. What value will get? Check the calculator. So pi square into It's 0.54. 0.548. Now it becomes in radian. Okay. Otherwise, phi was the degree, so you cannot write uh, that value of CL in degree. It should be in radian. Degree you have to use when there is a trigonometric function. Do not have trigonometric function, so degree you cannot put. Okay. So round off two decimal. So if you take 0.548, you can write 0.55. Point five five. This is the answer. All right. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll go, go for, for the next question. question. Consider steady incompressible inviscid flow. Listen carefully. Steady incompressible and inviscid flow. This is also called potential flow. Okay. Ask. Two air foils shown in figure. Coefficient of pressure at that railing edge. This is the railing edge of the air foil with finite angle shown in figure. Okay, this is the finite angle. While that uh, finite angle, figure one, is CP one. Means that coefficient of pressure is what CP one for this figure one. Railing edge of the air foil with the cusp shape. Okay, shown in figure. This is figure two, and here it is CP two. Which one of the following statement? Uh, following options is true. So this is the option. Anyway, before going into this, we should know what is the finite angle. So basically, finite angle. They are talking about the uh, trailing edge portion. This is what cusp, and this is the finite angle portion. So here, always remember at the trailing edge. If it, it is finite angle, angle so, so as per Kutta Jukusi theorem, KJT, that railing edge should be the stagnation point. Yes or no? So, so if it is stagnation point, so two things you need to remember here also and here also. Similarly, here, here, this is V1, this is what V2. This is V1, this is what V2. So for the finite angle, obviously. 
two streamline will come from this side and another will be this side so both will be crossing to each other that is the stagnation point stagnation point so remember here v1 is equal to v2 and that is equal to zero for the finite angle okay that you know very well and as, as per kutta's equation theorem you know that uh, it should be the stagnation point and obviously gamma t you had seen should be zero okay what about the cusp for the cusp shape here also v1 is equal to v2 But, but it does, does not, not equal to zero, so, so this, this is not a stagnation point. point. You know very well for the CP what we have the formula because simply the formula is what P minus P infinity divided by half rho V infinity square dynamic pressure. But if it is steady incompressible any rotational flow, like if it is potential flow, here I have mentioned if it is potential flow, then this result pressure you can write in terms of V upon. V infinity square, right? If it is stagnation point, then at stagnation point, at stagnation point, what is the V? V is the velocity at the surface. It means at the trailing edge, it becomes zero. So what will be the CP? CP is equal to one. So means where is the stagnation point in case one or case two? Only case one we have stagnation point because velocity becomes zero. Because I'm only at a stagnation point, two streamline can intersect to each other. So hence, for the finite angle, trailing edge will be the stagnation point. Hence, CP one will be one. That is the one option you got. I mean, one answer you got. Check where is the CP one. Here we have CP one, and here we have CP one. These two are wrong. All right. Now we'll discuss about the CP two. Uh, CP one is one. That is correct. But what about CP two? So CP two again, I will write the formula. CP because it's a potential flow, so one upon V divided by V infinity. So this V will have some value. Okay, this V will have a value, and obviously this ratio will have a value. So whatever the result you will get, it will be less than one. Because now this is not a stagnation point for case two. Case two, this is not a stagnation point. Here I have told you, this is not a stagnation point because velocity does not becomes zero here. Velocity is there. Velocity is there. It means it becomes. It is not a stagnation point. So obviously velocity is there. Okay, if velocity is there, then this ratio bracket will have some finite value. So one minus some value will be less than one. Hence it becomes clearly it is now CP two is less than. One. So, so what is the correct option? CP one should be equal to one, and CP two should be less than one. CP one is less than one. CP one is one, and CP two is less than one. Means this answer is also wrong. What is the correct option? This. So C is the correct answer. Hmm? Correct. Correct option is C. Right. All right. I think this one is very clear. All right. We will go for the next question. All right. Uh, again, see this is uh, this question is what contest of uh, steady implicit incompressible flow, right? Again, it is all about potential flow. This is called potential. Flow. Consider the superposition of uniform flow. I will draw here. Should be uniform flow with a speed of u. Okay. Along the positive x-axis from left to right. Okay. From left to right. Take care. And a source of strength. Gamma located at the origin. Okay, I can say here. Okay, I can take this one imaginary line, and this is the here. This is the y-axis, and this is the x-axis. Okay, so where is the where is the source? They said. Source of strength A is located at the origin. Means this is the origin I can consider. X, Y axis. So this is the origin. Uh, 
and here we have a source so this is what source This is what source. So this combination superposition is for what? It's combination of uniform flow and superposition of source flow. Then what will be the pattern? So now I will draw the pattern. So I can consider this is the origin basically, and here at the origin we have a source. This, this is the source now, and this is obviously this is the origin also. This, this is what origin, <coughs> and obviously uniform flow is what coming from left to right. So the uniform flow is what coming like this. So source and uniform flow will uh, collide here because source is what coming in this direction. Check it is source and uniform flow is what coming this side. So it will hit somewhere. So it will make some imaginary boundary like this. Okay. And now, so it will be like this. This is the source. And obviously, this will be short like this. So that boundary will be created. Okay, that boundary will be created, and it will be like this. Okay. Now, this boundary I can say it is an imaginary boundary. Okay, but it will be treated like a rigid. Wall. That means that flow cannot cross to each other. Okay. So here both are colliding to each other. So this will be what is stagnation. This will be the stagnation point. Obviously, two flows are coming from opposite to each other, and once they will hit to each other, then it will be the stagnation point. Stagnation point means velocity becomes zero here. Okay. And that uniform flow will continuous. It will be like this. It is like this. See, this is no uniform. You know, this was I had explained in my regular lectures. It was a Rankine half body. Okay. Right. So this is the origin. Now, which one of the following statements not true regarding the location of the stagnation? Point of the resulting flow. Check the moves closer to it moves closer to the origin. Increasing gamma, which you is held constant, it moves closer to origin for increasing. The location of stagnation point. So just say this location of stagnation point is from the origin is R. Okay, it's R S. R S stands for stagnation point. Right. How many stagnation point exist? Only one stagnation point. This is called S1. Only one stagnation point because it's a Rankine half body. If it is Rankine full body, two stagnation points will get. So if you go and calculate the location of stagnation point, okay, I'm not going to derive. It's a simple one. You can derive also, but here directly I will write the location of stagnation point. Location of stagnation. Point. So, so it will be R comma theta. theta. R value that, that is the radial distance, distance. Uh, here. See, this, this is the radial distance, distance. R value. Uh, this, this R is nothing but, but <coughs> what is the source strength gamma. So, so R is nothing but. but Gamma divided by 2 pi. This, this is the derived. Okay, if you derive this, then you will get uh, this is equation of stagnation point. It's simple, but directly here I am writing. And theta will be pi. Pi means 180 degree. Okay, there is all value here. Whatever I have written, it is in radian. So theta will be 180 degree. Here in radian, it is pi. This gamma is the, remember, don't get confused. This is the strength of source. 
Stagnation point is inversely proportional to uniform velocity. Right? This is the derived formula here. Huh? This formula is what derived formula. Here I am not deriving directly. I am writing, but you have seen in regular lectures it was derived. Now based on this, you can answer for the question. What they said? It moves closer to the origin for increasing gamma, while u is held constant. Now check if if u is what constant. Okay, if u is constant. Then if you increase gamma, then r value will increase. If r is what increasing, then it is coming closer. If r is what increasing, it is not coming closer. It is going beyond. So first option is what wrong? It is not coming closer. Second, it moves closer to origin for increasing u. Check for increasing u. Once you you are increasing u, then r is what decreasing. Yes, it is coming closer. Means what coming closer means? This origin and the stagnation point coming closer. So why? Because once you are you are you are increasing u, then r is what decreasing because both are reciprocal. So u is increasing, then r is decreasing means both are coming to closer. So it moves closer to origin for increasing u while uh, gamma is held constant. Is this is correct? It is located to the left of the origin. What it is means what? They are it is means they are talking about stagnation point. So what is the option third? They are saying it is located to the left of origin. Where is the origin? Check. This is the origin, and R S is what left. This side is what right, and this side is what left. It means yeah, stagnation point is what located at the left of of the origin. Ah huh, yes, this is also correct. Fourth is it is located along x-axis. Yeah, it is along l. Along x axis only, the diagram only you have seen here. See, it is along x axis only. This is what this is the x axis. Where is the stagnation point? Somewhere here. So obviously x is what x and this is what y. So where is the stagnation point? It is along x axis. So this fourth option is also correct. So how many correct options are B, C, and D? These are the multiple select questions. Very simple here. These are the multiple select question. Okay, done. So no no they said which one of the following statement is not true okay okay not true so which one is not true my god which one is not true a is not true so what is the correct option correct option correct option means not true which one is not true this a is not true these three are true this a is not true so this will be the answer. Okay, okay, you need to, to check. check. Anyway, all right. right. <coughs> this, this is the next question. question. Divan, an aircraft flies with a speed of V1 meter per second at an altitude where the temperature is C1 on day two. The same aircraft flies with the speed. Okay, I will take uh, diagram here. This is the day one. And this, this is what day two. They said the same aircraft. The same aircraft we have. Okay, day one and day two. Here, uh, if you go with the problems, what they said? Day one velocity is v one and temperature is c one. For day two velocity v two becomes root of this and temperature this. Mach number m one and mach number. How does? Okay, fine. I will write all the value. Sorry. So it's a Velocity is what v1 temperature c1 mach number is m1. Here velocity is what given. What is that? Velocity is root of 1.5 point 
2 of v1 what is the v2 and uh, what is the uh, temperature where the d2 v2 is root of 1.2 v1 and t2 is 1.2 times of t1 t2 is 1.2 times of t1 right and what is the Mach number m2 okay now <coughs> Right. Assume ideal gas behavior for assume the ratio of specific heat molecular weight are the same for both cases means indirectly they are talking about gamma R okay constant constantly not going to change. It is not going to change. Okay. What they said in problem? They said the how does the Mach number M2 on day 2 compare with M1? So means they are asking about the ratio that M1 and M2 relation. So see what is the M1? Check. M1 is V1 divided by root of gamma T1. What is M2? V2 root of gamma T2. Right? Now I will take M2. This is the result. What is the V2? Root of gamma R T2. I will write this value. What I can write? What is the V2? Check. V2 is root of V1 divided by gamma R. What is the T2? T2 is nothing but 1.2 times of T1 means it is root 1.2 V1. Take this 1.2 common outside. So it will be root of 1.2. What will be in root? It will be gamma R T1. You can say 1.2, 1.2 cancel out again. You will get V1 upon root of. Gamma RT. What is this? V1 upon gamma RT1 is M1. Means you got M1 is equal to M2. This is the answer here. Done. Check which one is correct. Option A is correct. A is correct. Alright. Moving to the next question. Consider a steady isentropic supersonic flow, Mach number is m greater than 1 means supersonic flow. This means supersonic flow. Okay, and this is what CD nozzle, convergent, divergent, this is the constant area. This is what constant area. This is convergent obviously and this is a divergent. Which one of the following options correctly describes the flow at the throat? Right. If this is supersonic flow, uh, let us see. Can only be supersonic, can either be sonic or supersonic, can only be supersonic, can only be sonic. Okay. Alright. So, <coughs> Which one of the following options correctly describes flow at the throat? So, alright, okay. See, I mean, if you go for the throat, so, alright, what are the options? Can only be subsonic, can either be sonic or supersonic. Can either be sonic or supersonic. Can only be supersonic. Can only be sonic. See, it is clearly mentioned. Consider a steady isentropic supersonic. If it is isentropic, means no shock formation. No shock formation. Okay, in the duct. There is no shock formation because if shock will be formed, then property will change. You know very well. Which one of the following options correctly describe the flow at the throat? So, because M is what greater than one, so this convergent section, okay, this convergent section, it will be having like a 
a diffuser. Okay. okay. It, for, for the, the supersonic flow, this convergent system will be behaving like a diffuser. It will be behaving like a diffuser. Why? Because it's a supersonic flow. So in diffuser, what will happen? The flow will be decelerated. It will be decelerated, and how much it can decelerate at throat? It becomes one. And this is what the divergent section. So again, the flow will start accelerating. Okay. So because okay, right. Now, so what are the chances? See, if m is exactly equal to one, then this side. This flow will be uh, start uh, because it's also diffuser. So it will start a decelerating. Okay, it will start decelerating, so it becomes subsonic now. This side. Okay, but if you check uh, for the CD nozzle, if both options are there, if M is greater than one here, then this diffuser. Which is the divergent section will be behaving like a nozzle, and then again flow will start increasing. Okay, for the supersonic flow. So both options are there. I mean, minimum max one is possible, and in fact greater than one also possible. Greater than one also possible, but at least minimum m is what one possible. Why I am saying m greater than one also possible? Because two options are there. If it is exactly one, then this in in this divergent section will be treated as a diffuser and it will start uh, uh, decelerating the flow. But if m is what little bit greater than one, then this divergent section will start behaving like a nozzle and again the flow will becomes supersonic. So to get supersonic flow here. Okay, okay, both, both options, options are there. there. I mean, here m can be equal to one or m can be greater than one also. Both, both options, options are there. there. Can either be sonic or supersonic. Both options are there. Can only be subsonic. Can only be supersonic. No. Can only be sonic. Can only be sonic. No, it is not correct. Can be sonic or supersonic. So option D is correct. I think. B is correct. Done. All right. Thank you.